I was in Hawaii last week with my family and spent much of it waiting for a hurricane. But it turned out the real storm was on the East Coast with those dramatic courtroom developments involving Paul Manafort and Michael Cohen. The establishment were quick to call it the worst week of the Trump presidency, a turning point that would end with Donald Trump's impeachment. Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats launched a new attack on the GOP's culture of corruption. Well, they're right about the corruption, but I'm not sure they're best placed to make that charge. Let's cut through last week's hot air and partisan bluster with a few simple truths. The Mueller inquiry was set up to investigate two things. Russian meddling and potential collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign. There's no evidence that the Russians or any other enemy actually affected the election. But to be fair, Mueller has unearthed important and useful details about Russia's attempts to do so. Most of the indictments so far are related to that. None of them have been about collusion. Paul Manafort's trials have nothing to do with either Russian meddling or collusion. The Michael Cohen business last week, again, had nothing to do with either Russian meddling or collusion. So all that elitist outrage was about things that were outside the mandate of the Mueller investigation. But should you care about them anyway? Let's start with Manafort. We showed you in Swamp Watch a few months ago that Paul Manafort practically invented the swamp. He pioneered corrupt lobbying and influence peddling in Washington, especially by foreign governments. The president may value his personal loyalty, but no Trump supporter should shed any tears for Paul Manafort. If drain the swamp means anything, it means shaming Manafort. But what about the rest of them? Where's the investigation into the sleazy dealings of all the other swamp creatures in both parties? Just to pick a random name, where's the Podesta trial? Now, let's look at Michael Cohen. The truth is, as we showed you in another Swamp Watch, that he's a swampy sleazebag too. They'd barely counted the votes on election night before Cohen was pimping himself out to giant corporations trying to cash in on his connection to Donald Trump. But wait, say the elitists, this isn't about Michael Cohen. It's about what Donald Trump asked him to do. That's the corruption. That's why the president should be impeached. OK, let's be clear. It's obvious what happened here. A decade or so before he ran for president, Donald Trump had affairs. Weeks before the election, he paid hush money to stop the details coming out and derailing his campaign. But professional politicians spend billions of dollars every year buffing up their images. How is this any different? The elitist political class, they write campaign rules legalizing their own corruption. Corruption that, unlike payoffs for playmates and porn stars, actually affects your life. Elitist corruption is payoffs for politicians and policy advisors who do their time in Congress and then end up on corporate boards. Elitist corruption is campaign cash in exchange for policies that help the big donors. Elitist corruption is the revolving door between government and lobbying and big business so the economy is rigged in favor of the rich and powerful instead of working Americans. All of that corruption is legal because the elitists have legalized it. They are the real threat to American democracy and have been for years. Tell me what you think at NextRev FNC and at Steve Hilton X. Joining me now to discuss Fox News contributor Sarah Carter. Sarah, we met the other week in D.C. I was so excited to see you. I'm such a fan. You said you love the show. We said, well, let's get you on. And here you are. I'm so happy to see you. I'm happy to be here, Steve, and the feeling is mutual. It was a great monologue. I think you pointed out so many significant and important facts there about this two-tiered justice system and what's happened here in Washington. I, I'm grateful for one thing, though. You know, had President Donald Trump not been elected, we would have never really seen the scope of this mm -hmm. or the magnitude of this. So let's just take one of the... Um one of the points there, there's so much to choose from, but I want to focus on this point about equal justice or the lack of it. Let's just look at Podesta. That, he's such a good example. His name has come up in the, in the Mueller process along with Manafort. Is anything happening uh, that's equivalent to what's happened with Manafort to Podesta? 
Well, he's been given immunity if he testifies against Manafort. And so I think that's very significant. Look, we've been seeing this from the beginning. And this is the reason why these congressional investigations have been so important to get the information out to the American people. Let's just go back to 2016 on July 4th weekend when the FBI was interviewing Hillary Clinton. When they interviewed her, she was basically not under oath. Uh, it was done on a July 4th weekend very quietly. She had Cheryl Mills with her, which was extraordinary because she was actually a witness as well if they were investigating her. Later we find out that Comey had basically already started to write the exoneration letter way before mm -hmm. the interview, which is a, a extraordinary in and of itself. So what we're seeing here is a consistent pattern of behavior where the establishment, and you pointed that out in your monologue, the swamp, whether it be the right or the left, because I think we've seen both sides just vehemently go after this administration, mm. go directly, directly after the administration. Paul Manafort, we knew it. Paul Manafort is part of this big swamp problem. You're very right. But they didn't do the same with Hillary. Hillary Clinton. And if you look at the FBI 302s, those were the ones on the Hillary Clinton interview, because remember, they didn't record it. So they had to wait until those 302s were released. We find out that shortly after the story broke that she had a private server, just weeks after that, she used bleach bit to clean off her entire server and significant amounts of emails just disappeared forever. But she was never reprimanded for that. She was never held accountable for that. Just imagine if President Trump would have done that, if somebody would have done that around him. I mean, this would be extraordinary. And I mean, I, yeah. I really believe it would be all over the news. But it just quietly kind of went away. And then just look at the FISA applications and the dossier and the use of the Clintons. The Clintons, who actually Hillary Clinton herself and her foundation, is still under investigation right now. I don't think people realize this. The Clinton foundation right. is actually under investigation by the FBI right now. And and it was the Hillary Clinton I'm, campaign and the DNC who actually paid right for the dossier to a foreign to a foreign spy. And just interesting. And the Clinton Foundation, of course, and you've played a, re a real part in exposing all this, is, is, is again a bit like Manafort, is the model of how the swamp works in terms of cash for access and policy. Um, just one quick last, last question to you, Sarah, before I bring in Lisa and Charlie. Where, wh what's, what's your prediction on that investigation to the Clinton Foundation? Is that going to go anywhere? What are we going to see and when might we, might we see it? I absolutely do believe it's going to go somewhere. What I know is that there were five FBI field offices involved in this investigation. They are still involved in this investigation. Little Rock, Arkansas is taking the lead. I think there's significant information on Haiti that's still out there. I think there's significant information mm -hmm. on money that was being moved into the Clinton Foundation and that they are continuing this investigation. It would be a shame. It would be a shame if they dropped this investigation or tried to bury it uh, because I think a lot of people, there's been a lot of injustice in particular, as, as much good as some parts of the Clinton Foundation have done, I think there's a lot that needs to be investigated and exposed.